Hi, my name is Ronit Mukherjee and I'm an Applications Engineer with Go Engineer. In today's video, I want to be talking about buckling analysis in SOLIDWORKS Simulation Professional. Now, what is buckling? Now, buckling is a mode of failure where sudden large displacements can happen due to compressive loads. When slender structures are subjected to compressive loads, this sudden displacement can occur. Now, this displacement, this occur, this can occur even though the highest stresses in the structures are well below the yield point. So it doesn't have to fail due to stress, but it can still buckle. Now, I want to show you how we can use the simulation professional tool to uh, figure out what mode of failure happens first. So let's see how this works. Um, in this case, I've got a simple stool, and I've got a part file of a stool. Uh, the idea is to run a, st a stress analysis on it, figure out what the factor of safety is for the, from the stress analysis, and then we're going to run a buckling an, uh, analysis and figure out the buckling factor of safety, and then compare the two to uh, understand which one happens first. So let's see how this works. So first things first, let's go ahead and grab our SOLIDWORKS simulation license. By going to SOLIDWORKS add-ins, clicking the SOLIDWORKS simulation license tab, uh, the option and what you'll notice it uh, SOLIDWORKS uh, adds a simulation tab right next to your other command manager tabs so once I go in there I have the ability of starting a new study we're gonna start with the static study I'll just call this uh, stress and I'll hit the green check now um, the material we're using is AISI 304 if I right click on it apply it material I have the ability of changing whatever material I want now one thing to see, these color combinations over here, I've got the red, black and the blue. So the red is the information that you do require to run a uh, the type of study you're in. So in this case we're a static stress study, uh, then in this case uh, we need the elastic modulus, the Poisson's ratio, the mass density and the yield strength. I'll hit apply to this and I'll close out of here. Next I'm going to apply external loads, I'm going to apply uh, heavy load from the top uh, sitting down on this particular uh, s s this particular face. So I'll right click on the external loads, go into force. I want to apply a load on that face. I want to apply a load in the perpendicular direction to the top plane. And I'll reverse it and then I'll apply a load of 8900 newtons. I'll say 8900 and I'll hit the green check over here. Now, next up is uh, fixtures. So I want to be able to fix these feet, uh, but I want to be able to restrain this tool properly. So if uh, if you want to think about it, if you're sitting on a stool, uh, I want to re restrain these going axially in uh, X, Y, and Z, and uh, these faces are allowed to buckle a little bit. So they're allowed to um, uh, move a little bit in a sense. Uh, uh, they're allowed to rotate about the axis and buckle. So let's see how I can apply that. So for that particular case, I'm going to apply a remote load mass. So I'll right click on the external uh, loads, I'll go to remote load mass, and uh, I'll do a displacement. So I'll select the third option for displacement. I want to select that particular face. And uh, what I've done is I've uh, added little coordinate systems uh, on those particular faces. So if you notice, if I hover over these coordinate systems, uh, they're exactly in the middle of that particular uh, uh, face. So I can select that particular coordinate system. So in this case, instead of global, I'll do user defined. And I'll select that particular coordinate system. And uh, what I can say is uh, the translation. So if I select this translation option over here and it's kind of a glitch you have to double click on it for it to change from force to translation and uh, what I want to do is I want to say it's uh, allowed to go 0 0 and 0 in all X Y and Z so that way uh, it's allowed to rotate but it's not allowed to translate uh, translate move and I want to be able to do that for uh, on my entire uh, the other three uh, the other three legs. So I'll hit the green check and I'll uh, quickly try to um, create this. So I'll go to remote load mass again, the displacement option. Uh, I want to select this the second option over here, and I'll do a user defined and uh, select my coordinate system. And like I mentioned, you see how this is showing as a force right now. But if I click on it. Uh, and recheck it, it becomes translation and I can uh, activate the X, Y and Z and give it a translation value of zero. I'll hit the green check and I'm going to do that two other time, two more times. 
So same process, I'll right click on external loads, go to remote load mass, select my displacement option, face, select my uh, coordinate system, in this case it's four, activate the translation, and activate the X, Y, and Z uh, um, translation values and set, to, set them to zero. Last, last phase, same process. I'll uh, do uh, the remote load mass, displacement. I'm selecting that face. I'm selecting my reference coordinate system. And that would, in this case, be the coordinate system 2. And I'm going to activate my translation and activate the X, Y, and Z and set those values to zero. Now, creating these uh, coordinate systems is uh, fairly simple as well. If you go into your features, into your reference geometry, uh, over here you can kind of create those coordinate systems. So, great. So once uh, those uh, four are set, uh, I think we are good with our fixtures, are, we're good with our uh, loads. And then the last thing to do is uh, do our meshing. So in order to do meshing, I want to be a little bit more accurate uh, in uh, uh, these uh, uh, these four feet areas. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a quick uh, mesh control. So I'll apply mesh control and I'm going to select a value of about, let's say, 10 millimeters. And I'm going to go ahead and select all these faces. I want uh, a higher accuracy in uh, all these uh, selected faces. So I'm going to apply a 10 millimeter mesh control in this case. So everything selected, I'll hit the green check. And now the last step, I'm going to go ahead and create my mesh. I want to do it as a curvature based and I'm going to do it as default 19.309. And uh, yep, brilliant. So we'll hit the green check. This goes ahead and meshes the model. And once it's done meshing, I'm going to go ahead and uh, run this uh, stress uh, study. It shouldn't take too long uh, to run, um, and once it's done running, we can plot the one MISIS, and we can also look at the factor of safety and uh, see what uh, uh, factor of safety uh, we're able to calculate from this particular uh, uh, stress study. So, so as soon as this is done running, what I can do is I can go into the results folder, look at my factor of safety plot. I want to do it uh, on all bodies. I want to do it based on maximum one MISIS, and I'll go next. I'll compare to the yield strength, multiplication factor of 1, and I've got my material as AISI 304, which has a yield strength of about 206.807. So I'll hit the green check, or I'll go next. And in this case, I can I can see that my minimum uh, uh, factor of safety is about uh, 1.13. So I'll uh, hit the green check to this. And uh, that's my minimum factor of safety. All right, now, so in order to uh, uh, to find out uh, what uh, the buckling factor of safety is, we have to uh, start a new study, and uh, this is this study is going to be the buckling study. So again, we'll go to our simulation tab, have the option for new study, and I'll select the new study option. And in this case, one of the options under advanced simulation is buckling. So I select the buckling option, and I can uh, name this study as a buckling study. I'll hit the green check to go into the study mode, and uh, I've got all this. Uh, I've got all the information over here that I need to uh, fulfill in order to run the study. So, from the stress, in order to save some time, what we can do is from the stress study, I can uh, select my material, the external loads, and the mesh. I'll select those three things, and I'll drag and I'll drop them into the buckling study. So again, we're able to get the loads, the mesh, and the material from study. And if you notice, I've got uh, the material satisfied, and I've got the loads and the fixtures right here, and the mesh as well. So all we have to do is uh, run this analysis. And uh, once this is done running, we're, we will be able to list the buckling uh, factors of safety and uh, we'll be able to compare those buckling factor of safety due, uh, with our stress factor of safety and uh, see which value occurs first. And uh, that will be, you know, if you multiply the force with that particular value, that's, the, um, that's what we're looking at. So here the buckling analysis is done running. What I can do is I can right click on the results folder 
and uh, I can uh, go list a buckling factor of safety. I see a buckling factor of safety of about 3.55. So um, if I uh, go back to my stress study, um, I, I remember from my stress study, I remember my stress factor of safety was about 1.13, and in this case, the buckling factor of safety is about uh, uh, 3.55. So if we uh, multiply this number with, with the 8900. Uh, uh, value that we got, got uh, 8900 value that we have for force. It definitely tells me that uh, this particular stool will yield first as compared to buckle first. Um, so yeah, so this is a good way of like you know having a, an idea if uh, your uh, model is going to buckle first or uh, uh, or you first. To in order to take it uh, to one next level, you know, of course we'll have to run a nonlinear analysis uh, on this particular stool as well to get uh, uh, more accurate, but. Uh, uh, with the simulation professional tool, we're able to get a good idea of uh, 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 whether it, whether your model will yield first or whether your model will buckle first. So, all right. So I hope you enjoyed uh, watching this uh, video. Um, thank you for watching. Cheers.